CVT Transmission Forward Clutch For any automobile with a CVT transmission to move, the forward clutch has to be engaged. The essence of the CVT is in the way it operates. In the CVT, you will find two variators pulleys, a steel belt, a high pressure oil pump, a valve body with solenoids, and a planetary gear set. All CVT units have a planetary gear set for reverse operation, and a two clutch packs, for forward and reverse. Instead of a chain like a bicycle, the CVT uses a belt that rides on the surface of the variator pulleys. An analysis of the CVT says that its operation, is as simple as the speed sprockets of a bicycle. To change ratios, the variator's pulleys shift their effective diameter. The primary pulley connects to the input shaft, through the forward clutch assembly, which applies in all forward ranges. This is a normal wet clutch component array, like those on a regular automatic transmission. The primary variator pushes the secondary variator pulley, with a segmented steel belt. As seen in our other articles. The TCM controls the ratios by modulating solenoids, that modify hydraulic pressure at each variator. In reverse, the forward clutch is released and the reverse clutch applied, holding the carrier to the case. Power flows clockwise through the input shaft to the annulus gear. Since the carrier is held in place, the sun gear will rotate counterclockwise, the sun gear is connected to the primary variator and, simply put, you have reverse. When we place the lever and drive all low, power flows from the torque converter, through the input shaft, through the applied forward clutch, to the sun gear assembly. The sun gear is mounted to the primary variator, so the input basically bypasses the planetary gear set. Since nothing is held, the gear set just idles as in neutral. There are CVTs without torque converters. CVTs without a torque converter, are typically driven through a dual mass flywheel, or a torsional damper plate, that connects the crankshaft to the input shaft. The BMW Mini Cooper VT1F, the Audi A6 and A81 Joule, and Honda Civic CVTs are examples of this type of CVT. To prevent the engine from stalling when the transmission is placed in gear, or when it comes to a full stop, a clutch inside the transmission must release. The Mini Cooper and the Audi, release the forward or reverse clutch, while the Honda Civic CVT releases a start clutch, in both drive, and reverse. These clutches are duty cycle pulsed, on and off, very frequently and are susceptible to failure. This can cause a variety of complaints, such as chatter on takeoff, sudden slipping, or conditions that feel like neutral, unusual idle fluctuations, or a loss of uphill climbing function. Audi and Honda offers an update package that increases the forward clutch size and amount of wet clutches to more friction clutch stacks, but it must also be accompanied by a computer e-flash, that changes pressure and apply strategies. If the e-flash is not performed, the updated clutch pack will be damaged very quickly. Understand that a relearn procedure must also be performed any time a new component is changed. On these CVTs, this step is ever more important, so don't skip it. Honda CVTs use a start clutch in place of a torque converter. This is different than other makers. The start clutch is located between the secondary variator pulley, 
and the differential. This means that the forward clutch, and the reverse clutch, are not duty cycle pulsed on and off. When they are in apply, they stay applied all the time. The start clutch is the clutch that's pulsed on and off, disconnecting the torque motion to the differential, and rendering the transmission in a neutral state. This means that when the clutch fails, it affects both forward and reverse operation. So, when this Honda CVT feels like slipping, it's the start clutch that's faulty. Honda Civic CVTs have been on the road since 1996, and have been showing up in repair shops for the start clutch replacement. After the repair is completed, a stalling when the transmission is placed in gear can occur. This is normally caused by cross connecting the internal wiring harness for the start clutch solenoid and the shift control solenoid. It's quite obvious that there are specific issues in diagnosing some model CVTs. A good place to start is to know which use a torque converter, and which CVTs do not, and those relearn procedures are very important. The challenge for the modern repair shop, will be to stay informed about their individual unique strategies and construction.